Hi friends, I'm Father Kerry Walters, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. Human dignity is an expression that we often hear these days. Uh, sometimes we hear it because people fear that it has been assailed, and sometimes we hear it by people who are trying to defend what they consider human dignity to consist in. It's an ancient question. It has been examined and reflected upon by philosophers from day one, and it's become a standard uh, question in the realm of Christian theology and spirituality. If human beings do possess dignity, and according to the Christian tradition we do, in what does it consist? Why do we possess dignity? I think one of the most intriguing responses to that question was made in the 15th century by the Renaissance thinker Giovanni Pico della Mirandola. Mirandola was an incredible, incredible person. He died when he was only 31, uh, and yet uh, in his short lifetime, he became one of the most learned people in Italy. He went to university at a quite young age. He was already fluent in Latin and Greek. And while at university, he studied Arabic and Hebrew and even Aramaic, the language that our Lord spoke. And he studied these languages because he was fascinated by what he saw as a continuity between the world's religions and cultures. Despite their differences, despite the different idea, idiom that they used to uh, communicate to uh, themselves in, there was a golden thread of continuity uh, that bound all of them together, at least so Mirandola uh, believed. He even composed what he called 900 Theses to try and argue for this cross-cultural and cross-religious continuity, and he invited anyone and everyone to publicly debate him on these 900 Theses. Unfortunately, the public debate never took place. The church became alarmed by what Mirandola was saying and silenced him and eventually even condemned some of the 900 theses. As a sort of preface to what he hoped would be a public debate, he writes an incredible little book entitled An Oration on the Dignity of Human Beings. It's a really relatively short book and can easily be read in a single sitting, but it has enough philosophy and theology in it to occupy our minds and our imaginations for an entire lifetime. Mirandola says this, the dignity of human beings consists in the fact that we are what he calls chameleons. We are not locked into any specific nature or essence. By exercising our will, we can change ourselves, either for the good or for the worse. There is no other creature on God's green earth or in God's heavens, including the angels, who possess that ability. In order to really appreciate what Mirandola is saying, what we have to do is to understand the going metaphysic of his day. It was a metaphysic that had been popular in the medieval period as well, and it's been called the Great Chain of Being model of reality. According to the Great Chain of Being model, everything that has been created by God was created with a specific nature and fits into a very specific place in the entire realm of reality. And you can think of all of this as a great chain of being in which each and every species and class of things that exists has its hierarchically designated place in reality and is locked into that place just as the links on a chain are locked into place. So, for example, at the very top of the great chain of being, obviously enough, we would have God, and at the very bottom rung or, or link of the great chain of being, we would have something that is just as distanced from God as one can possibly imagine, a, a stone, a, an, a molecule, an atom. And in between those two outermost links lie everything else. So humans would occupy, you would think, some particular and discrete part of the great chain of being. But Mirandola says, no, that's not the case. And he explains it like this. It's a really rather lovely way of getting across his point about human freedom. 
He says that when God was creating everything, humans were created last. But God had run out of natures or essences by that point, because God had used those natures or essences in making everything else. And yet God wanted to create a being that was capable of appreciating creation, that was capable of feeling gratitude and love for God. And so what God decided to do then was to take a little bit of the natures of everything else that God had created and mix them together, as it were, and create human nature. Human beings then, according to Mirandola, are microcosms of the macrocosm. We are tiny universes, as it were, whose nature reflects the entire great chain of being. And yet we are not locked into any designated place in the great chain of being. Uh, why is that? Well, at least in part because we are also endowed with the likeness of God. And God has as two of God's primary characteristics, reason on the one hand and love on the other. And a being that is endowed with reason and love is capable of willing. And an act of will moves us in one direction or another. A being that is capable of willing is a being who is free, who isn't locked into a designated and discreet place in the great chain of being. Our dignity then consists in that. But it's not a guaranteed dignity. How could it be? If dignity is a function of freedom, there is no guarantee that you and I will live up to that dignity, that you and I will deserve that dignity. Pico Mirandola says this, because we have free will, we can climb upwards toward God or we can sink downwards toward brutality. The choice, of course, is ours. We can misuse the reason and capacity for love that God has given us, or we can embrace those two characteristics and allow them to draw us ever closer to what Pico thinks is our final destination, God. If we climb the great chain of being toward God, we will be fulfilling that which will bring us, says Pico, felicity or happiness or excellence or fulfillment. Uh, everything that God has created has the potential to reach its own level of felicity or excellence. An acorn, for example, uh, its nature is to grow into an oak tree. And if it does that, it will have achieved the fulfillment that the kind of thing that it is has hardwired into it, as it were. Well, the destiny of human beings, the ultimate goal of human dignity, of human freedom, is to become more and more and more godlike. That is what our happiness, our felicity, and uh, uh, our fulfillment uh, consist in. So what Pico della Mirandola then has to say in an oration on the dignity of human beings, I think at any rate, is really quite exciting. We have been given a wonderful gift, the gift of freedom, that uh, liberates us from being locked into any specific role or function in the universe. And it is up to us to decide how we will use that great, great gift. And it's precisely the way in which we use the gift, as well as the ownership of the gift itself, that uh, allows us to say that human beings possess inherent dignity. I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit Moment. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.